Well, thank you. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all today and uh, glad to be starting off the summer box with everyone. Um, so could I see a show of hands for those of you that have on camera or the hand emoji? How many of you have started your journal already? Good, I'm seeing lots of hands up. Awesome, great. So um, I've also started a journal, but I saved a journal to open today to just kind of go through some of the things that I do when I first start a journal. So we're gonna start there. We're gonna do a couple of things looking at the materials specifically. We'll play with the bonus prompt from this month's box. And um, then I'm gonna show you a couple other different mixed media things. We'll have time for questions and for sharing. And um, if we have time, some looking at some different journal pages as well. And I'll talk through some of what was created there, All right? So that's our game plan. So I think we can go to the studio desk now. At any point when my face is facing towards the art, if I get too quiet, just let me know and I'll speak a little louder. But I'm gonna have my face turned this way. So just let me know if you can't hear me well. Um, first thing I wanted to make sure everybody saw, because if you didn't look closely, you might miss it. With the newspaper that we got from Newspaper Club, they actually printed a wonderful little thing on there that says printed exclusively for Art Journal Snack subscribers. So what a wonderful little piece of ephemera that we ended up with um, from that great resource. So I wanted to make sure that everyone saw that and has it set aside to play with at some point. Okay, so this is a brand new Art Journal Snacks journal. And I kept it wrapped up because I wanted to talk through some of what I do when I start a journal, no matter the source. Right? I always think about how does the journal feel in my hands? Um, what's the thickness of it? feeling the paper. I try to find journals that kind of feel good and are easily portable. Because one of the things that's been really important to me in having an art journaling practice that's been going for decades now is uh, I, I want to take my journal with me everywhere I go so that I always have it available. So this is a great size because it's not super heavy. It can easily tuck into a bag. Um, or a pocket, <laughs> and it does some good traveling. We also included the little line on the back. I always date my journals when I start them and when I end them, but for the Art Journal Snacks journals, I've been writing the season. So we'll start this one for summer. Okay, so uh, other things to know about this journal, it has a sewn spine binding, which is really great because it means the pages will stay in there securely. One thing to know if you do rip pages out, if you rip it out all the way to that sewn binding, like if I ripped this page out, it would make the page on the other side of the signature loose. So it's just a thing to know. Sometimes if I rip pages out of a sewn spine book like this, I'll end up gluing the page before and the page after where I've ripped together on both sides. And then that just makes sure that my pages stay put and I don't lose them. All right, so we have the beginning of this journal. And I think a really wonderful thing to start this journal with is this great thing from the newspaper club. And when I'm starting a journal, another thing I do is Sometimes I'll just kind of go through and put some things in without a plan, right? Just some things that I happen to have around on the desk or um, pulled out of magazines that are ready to go, but I don't really have a plan yet. And then I let the pages evolve. So you'll see me work a couple of different ways in an art journal where sometimes I'll sit down and I'll do a page from start to finish. And other times I will start something and then just let it sit for a little while and I come back to it later. So that's how I'm gonna treat this inside cover page as something I will come back to later. Okay, so the blank white page. Um, if you're just starting an art journaling practice, this can be really intimidating. What do I do with this blank white page? And that's why the 
process of art journal snacks has been so useful for people starting because you've got new materials to play with, right? New materials to try out. And so that blank white page can be such a wonderful spot to experiment. So we got the uh, Derwent sketching pencils in this month's box and and one of the things that we've been playing with in the uh, art journal snacks live streams is a one, two, three different ways of playing with a material. Right. So um, if I start with the HB pencil, one, two, and then three. Okay. So if I stick just with the pencils, I can experiment with the three different softnesses of these pencils, using them in a different way. And just what kind of scribbles can I make here? And you can see that the three different hardnesses of pencil, the HB is lighter, the 2B is in the middle, and the 4B is much darker, right? It's a much bolder line. So I've got these three different scribbles here, and um, it's interesting to kind of see how they look just right next to each other, right? So there's one, and then two, what happens if I just kind of do a bigger scribble incorporating all three again, but no real plan, right? Can I tell the difference between these different scribbles and what happens when I use all three of them together? So you might be saying, it's a big mess, Aaron. Well, wait, <laughs> maybe it can become something. And then for three, really thinking about how can I use these pencils in different ways to create a page, right? So there's something really satisfying about using a pencil on paper and the sound that it makes. I really love writing with soft pencils. So maybe you write a little bit about the feeling of holding a pencil in your hand. So the feeling of holding a pencil in my hand and then write just the next thing that comes to your mind. What comes to mind when you read that beginning of a sentence? So the feeling of holding a pencil in my hand for me is one of possibility, right? Because pencils are so versatile they're so forgiving, right? We have the ability to erase. And they also have what we talk about in art therapy as a, a relative amount of control. So it's not quite so intimidating as some of the more colorful or more fluid media. This is a material that I can use and know that I have a sense of control in my use of it. I generally know how it's gonna behave. It can be, but it's not usually super messy. Although talk to me after you do a big full pencil drawing, right? It can get pretty messy. Okay, so if it's a feeling of possibility, let's see. Let's see. Simple handshake here. And I always think it's funny when you draw a pencil holding a pencil <laughs> with a pencil. Using the tool, it's like, I don't know why this is coming to mind, but it's like art cannibalism, it's like drawing itself. I don't know, using itself up to draw itself. <laughs> Yeah, very meta. So now I'm kind of exploring how light of marks can I make, right, with these pencil drawings. And 
since we're getting high enough resolution here on Zoom so you can see that this is the chubby pencil and I'm getting these very lovely whispery kind of marks. So another thing that I think about when I'm trying out a material and seeing how it works on the page is what, what are the qualities of these marks that I'm making? How do, how do they feel when I'm making them? And what happens as I'm using the pencil on the page? So pencils are also really great for kind of labeling things. So I'm thinking about a title for this is um, artist and the tool reaching. Just kind of thinking about how our hands are reaching out and we're using our art materials also as a way to reach out and find things out and discover and learn. Okay, so three different ways of playing with the pencils. And then once you've done something like this, of course you can come back in with other materials and add color, um, turn your scribbles into things, but um, don't be afraid to use your art journal as a, a place to explore things like this, right? This, this page might not have, maybe this one does, but this page might not have deep meaning. All your pages don't have to have deep meaning. Sometimes we make art journal pages just because it's enjoyable and fun. So I wanted to do another one, two, three in another, this is the um, Art Journal Snacks journal that I'm working in uh, for more examples. And I'll use this one for summer and fall. And I started a page um, using the Marabou Art Crayons. And I wanted to show you a little bit about the three different ways that you can use the Marabou Art Crayons. Okay. So um, first way is to, use it on your paper. And if you haven't used these yet, I just find they're so satisfying. It's like drawing with lipstick. The thing you always wanted to do when you were a kid, and maybe some of you did. You should let us know in the chat if you were a, a kid that got in trouble for drawing with lipstick on the wall or your sibling's face. And now I'm using a water brush and you can see that this moves the pigment right away. And it blends really beautifully. So way number one to use the art crayons is to put the pigment down and then immediately use water to smooth that paint out. And it ends up taking on an effect that's kind of in between gouache and watercolor, depending on how much water you use. So that's way number one. Way number two, I pre-did this one. This is using the same yellow. I did this a couple of days ago, filling in the shape of this circle with just yellow marks. You can see they're a little bit thick here and that's on purpose so that it'll build up a nice resist. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of watercolor now. Mm -hmm. you can see that it creates this, it's kind of an interesting resist. It's not as strong as like a wax crayon and it will blend a little bit if you kind of scrub at it with the brush too much. But if you go on kind of quickly with watercolor, that pigment will stay put and you get a really unique look. I encourage you to experiment with this by using your crayons to make marks and then just let them be. And you can try and see what works best for you. I like to push kind of hard and get a lot of pigment onto the page. And then I like to go kind of fast with my watercolor so that I don't smear around too much of the pigment. Okay, so 
pretty interesting there. You can see now this looks really complex, right? You look at this and you're not really sure how was this made, right? And that's something that is fun if you're a mixed media artist, if you do complex art journal pages. I really enjoy looking at pages that I'm not quite sure how the artist did it, right? What did they do? How did they make that effect happen? You can look at it and try to figure it out. And it's kind of a fun uh, scavenger hunt of techniques. Okay, so in this middle one, we're going to explore just really kind of all of these things. Like how can we use the crayon that has already dried, the idea of using a resist and using it and moving it around with a, with a water brush all at the same time to create a really mixed media one. So I'm gonna put this layer on of yellow. And I'm gonna move it around with a water brush. The stuff that's already on this page is a water soluble graphite and a little bit of alcohol ink, the pink here. I'll show you in a bit what I did to this journal before I started working in it. Okay, so you can see the water soluble graphite is moving around a little bit. The alcohol ink is staying put. And I've now put that yellow over that whole circle. But now I can come in with another art crayon and now I'm using it into wet. So it's gonna be a little fuzzier on the edges, a little bit of a softer line. And you can see here where it goes over the yellow that's already dried. Again, that yellow kind of resists a little bit. So now I'm just gonna blend a little bit into the edges. Right, help that pink blend into this circle a little bit more. Losing and finding the edges, which is something you'll hear me say a lot. And then one more thing I wanted to show, I think I'll go one more color around here. Now I'm putting a little bit of another color of art crayon over top. So this is now the third layer of art crayon. Incidentally, this thing that I'm gonna show you next also works with oil pastel. And I worked with an art therapist once um, who was so skilled at doing this. It was pretty magical to watch her. But you do kind of layers of oil pastel or the art crayons work too. And then you can scratch back into it with a pencil. And it reveals the color that's underneath. And again, you get this really interesting texture and pattern. This can be a fun way to create like a whole background that you do some more journaling onto. It works in a lot of different ways. Oh, good. I'm glad to see we've got some lipstick on the wall, people. <laughs> All right. So there's three different ways to use the Marabou art crayons. And that's just three, there's lots more, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure to show that uh, these are tools that, though they say, you know, water soluble crayon, you can use it in a lot of different ways and it has a lot of different um, capacity to create marks. Cool. Okay, so before I do the next thing, I just wanted to show you what I did to this journal. Since a lot of you are uh, in the early stages of your journal, maybe you have a little opportunity to do this. I just took um, alcohol ink, but you could do this with any kind of watercolor or watercolor ink. And I just squirted it along the edge of the journal and just let it drip into the book, however it did. I think I diluted this a little bit with plain rubbing alcohol also to make it do this. So this is a one way to address the blank page problem um, is by adding color there again with no plan yet, but it helps when you turn the page and you don't have a blank page. You've got a little bit of something there that you can start to work with and uh, figure out what you might wanna do. Okay, so we're gonna let this one dry. 
and we'll come back to another blank page in the summer book. And I thought it would be fun to work with the bonus prompt from the menu. So my recommendation is to actually cut it out. We've designed the menu in a way that cutting the prompt out won't destroy anything else. Of course, if you wanna write it yourself, that is fine too. Put the bonus prompt in here. So the prompt this month is, I see, I feel, I am. So you could think about answering this kind of in a here and now, what do I see? What do I feel? What am I right now in this moment? You could think about it on a larger level, like at your core. What do you see at your core? What do you feel? And your deepest, truest self, who are you? So you can think about what feels right, right now to answer. Okay, so I see possibility, I feel hopeful, I am here for it all. And that's what I'm feeling this morning. Um, it's totally fine too, if your answers don't feel super positive, sometimes they won't, and that's fine. And that's the other thing that I love to share about art journals is you can close that book up. And so if you've written something and you're like, ooh, that went somewhere I didn't mean to go, or that was kind of more intense than I meant for it, that's a page that no one ever has to see. And that's one of the things that I love about art journaling is it can be very private. It can be a space that's just for you. And that means that you can use the page to express whatever you need in that moment. Okay, so I wanted to use a little bit of the ephemera from the ephemera envelope, and this seems like a good, good fit for that. And while I while I put it in, I'll tell you a little bit about how I created these. Um, so this piece of tissue paper might look like just kind of some stained tissue paper, but let me tell you, it has a lot of layers of stuff on there. So there's alcohol ink, there's watercolor ink, there's salt, there's bleach, believe it or not, to kind of bleach some areas away. They got all wrinkled up. They were all over the studio floor in here for a couple of weeks, getting various layers and then drying out. But I thought it would be fun to create something that there was really just like no ability to control what happened. And a lot of times starting with something like that can be a great way to figure out or make space for yourself, I guess, to express whatever it is you want to express. So I'm going to frame this in a little bit with one of the art hang -ons. And this serves two purposes because as I'm going back and forth at this edge and kind of getting a lot of the pigment on there, it'll also help that edge stick down. So as you continue thinking about your prompt, you might think about what imagery goes with that. When I think about how I've responded, I see, I feel, I am, those are all statements about myself. And what does what else does that look like? How might I represent that in some way? I'm looking through some of my collage material here. Um, I found this the other day and it's just like so much color, so much going on here. I wonder if there's a way to incorporate some of this in, but it might be a little too much. I don't know. Uh, 
I like that there's so much going on in this because this is kind of how I'm feeling, lots of color, um, but it feels a little too big. So I think I'm gonna wait on that. Who else? Oh, here we go. I'm gonna use this because I know someone else in the art journal snacks world has also cut this image out from the catalog. And it's just like, well, that's perfect, right? Messy paintbrushes with these beautiful colors. So I'm not gonna cut it out all the way. I'm just gonna cut away, cut away some of the background so I don't lose too much of my tissue paper. So when you're gluing something down, when you're collaging something in that crosses the gutter, a really good practice is to fold it first with a nice strong fold. And then that's what helps you get it right into that center line. Um, as you continue working in your art journal, if you don't do that, you'll have various gaps here. And it just means that the pages are a little harder to turn and your book is gonna get full, don't get me wrong but this will enable your pages to turn a little better. If you take that one moment and think about where the fold is gonna be in the thing that you're putting in. That that one didn't quite line it up, did I? Hmm. All right, so we've got our paint brushes. And I think what I'll do. down here, I've got another weird thing I have on my studio desk right now. This is uh, like a wood veneer tape. But since these are wood handled brushes, this might be kind of a fun thing to play with. And it's kind of like washi tape, except it's actually wood veneer on there. So don't be afraid to put strange kind of textured materials into your art journal. It absolutely works. That's something that we play with a lot is this idea of like what you can and cannot put in your art journal. And the answer to the cannot is very little. <laughs> There's ways to figure it out, right? There's ways to put all sorts of weird things into your art journal. When I'm adding elements like this, I generally don't like to do even numbers unless I'm working on something that I want it to be balanced from side to side. I'm looking for a place that has a third little bit of solution is to peel the backing off and then cut it. Yep. So this is also helping my collage items stick down. If we can go up to five here. Very satisfying to cut that stuff. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, if this is going to mean I can't work in this book anymore for today, but I think I will. So this is the 3D liner that we got. And um, if you were a child of the 80s and early 90s, like me, you probably had all sorts of things you did with puffy paint. <laughs> if you were a parent at that time, you probably did a lot of puffy painting as well. And um, 
regular puffy paint will work in your art journal. However, it's a little bit very, it's a little bit glossy. And so what happens is it'll make your pages stick together. What's nice about this is it's a little bit more matte. And if you don't put like a huge bubble of it, it will not stick your pages together. And I'm also going to show you some different things you can do with it. Again, to avoid that thing of that tragic thing that some of you may have encountered sometimes where you've used a lot of high gloss onto your art journal and then you close your book up and then you go to open it later and it maybe wasn't all the way dried or it's extra glossy and your pages are stuck together. And it's not the end of the world. Sometime I'll do a, a short live stream about um, what to do when your pages stick together, how to survive it. <laughs> so I'm just doing some thin lines with this and then There's a couple of different things you can do. You can let it be, right? You can just let it sit just as it is. Or you can go in and kind of brush away from that side. What's nice about these liners is that they get the paint right where you want it. And then you can do other things with it. You don't have to leave it in that more puffy paint look. You can go back in and use a water brush or Use a regular paintbrush. Just kind of spread it out, smooth it out a little bit. But it's it enables line making that are it's very difficult to get with a regular brush. I'm gonna move some more of this right around. Hey Aaron, oh. just Sarah jumping in here real quick. Um, we are 35 minutes into class. So you got about an hour left. No problem. So what you can see that's happening here, because the green marabou mixed media crayon is still wet, as I come up next to it with the water brush and the acrylic paint, I can blend them together. So again, one of the benefits of these mixed media crayons is they play very well with lots of different materials. Okay. So that's getting kind of interesting over there. I've got a lot of orange over on this side. And I think um, because this there's red in this brush and then there's a little bit of red and orange over here, but I wanna try to find um, a little more balance on this page. And one way I could do that is with a little bit of wax crayon. And just kind of finding ways to blend the collaged items in with the other things on the page. Last and kind of into the spaces between the brushes here. Oh. We got a quick question in the chat. Um, do the crayons dry, quote unquote? Yes. Yes. So that's um, what I showed here. These yellow marks on this one, those were totally dried. And um, if you look closely, you can see there's a little bit of, they're a little raised up. And so it will dry with quite a bit of pigment on there. Now, if you scrub at it with a brush that's um, like a stiff bristle brush like these, you'd probably move the pigment around. So it's not like acrylic and it's not like wax, but it does dry um, different than oil pastel, right? Oil pastel will maintain that oily quality, whereas these will dry or cure. Oh, okay, Jill, yeah. Um, our different climates will definitely change how, how they interact. So you can see now what's happening going over the marabou mixed media crayon that's semi-dry with a regular wax crayon and the way that that is playing together is pretty interesting. And if this way of working is new for you, I really do encourage just 
kind of moving color around on your page, seeing what happens. Don't get, it's working in an art journal is different than working on like a finished piece, right? On a canvas, because I find that it works out better if you just stay in the process of creating the page and respond to the materials as you're using them. Planned out pages. Uh, sometimes they can be beautiful, but on the whole, you know, they don't maybe feel as satisfying or as cathartic or as fun to do because you've kind of gotten this idea in your head and you're only going to do that idea instead of letting yourself feel and experience whatever's going on as you're creating. Okay, I'm just going to turn this book so that I don't put my, <laughs> my hand into that wet acrylic over there. And I'm just going to blend the edges of the crayon here. And then you can see how it acts next to a regular wax crayon where the wax is acting as a resist to the water media. So since this is pretty wet over here, we'll go ahead and do this also. So the mixed media crayons will do what watercolor does and what acrylic can do with a salt. <laughs> reaction. So where this spot is really wet, I'm just going to sprinkle a tiny bit of salt into that. Maybe a tiny bit right here too. Okay, and we'll let that do its thing. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to come back to this book now. And I think what we'll do now is play a little bit with some more ephemera. And two things that are just poking out of my envelope right now are some graph paper, which is always a fun thing for a journal because you could fill the whole page with it and then fill it with writing. You could cut it down a little smaller, which is what I think I'm going to do for this page. Lined paper works too, post-it notes work too. Any of these things that are kind of designed for writing are great to incorporate in to kind of make a little spot for yourself that you can write with later, write on later. Actually for this, I think we'll use the adhesive. Now, many of you know I'm a pretty hardcore glue stick person, but this is a really nice adhesive because it's, it's very strong. It's a lot simpler than some of the other adhesive tools like this that I've tried. And you get a really nice, strong, right here into the surface that's pretty fast. Paper down. And then the other thing that was sticking out of my ephemera envelope was this net. And I thought that looked nice with the with the red alcohol ink there. So it's just a matter of deciding how do I want to stick this down? Right? There's lots of different ways you can use glue, you could let it be loose, you could sew it on, I'll show you in a little while a book that I've been sewing in. But I think for this, I'm going to use the matte medium. And so I'm going to put this on kind of messy. And I'm doing that on purpose again, because I want the resist that it will create on the page. And I want the texture that it'll create on the page.
So again, starting at the gutter of your book and spreading out from both directions. It's gonna get you a, a, a better, better fit on the page. What I like about the way this is starting to look is the, the different effect of the red ink that's on the page and then the red of the netting over the top. Mm, yeah. Art journals can be a little bit picky about their climate and also the climate they're stored in. Um, one thing that can be really helpful, um, just addressing this question in the chat, one thing that can be really helpful, and I've talked about this before, but if you have things that are sticking together in your journal, even when you store it away, to store it with wax paper in between some of those pages, that can help. Um, and, you know, Adhesives are tricky, right? Um, you, you work with what you have around at the time. Sometimes that doesn't stay or last and you have to do a little bit of repair as you go. Um, some of my journals from you know 20 some years ago, uh, if I pull them out of the boxes, I have to do a little bit of, of journal repair, journal surgery, if I'm looking through the pages. Okay, so I put onto this page when I started, we all have the power to make a change. And I think that's what I'll do some journaling about here. But before I do, I wanted to add a little bit more with the mixed media crayons. So I'm gonna go up to the edge of where that matte medium is and you can start to see the interesting effect that happens now, right? Where I'm going into something and it's kind of messy and I'm getting a little matte medium onto the crayon, but that's fine because it can just wipe off. But see how much darker it is when you go into an acrylic medium. Scribble across my grids a little bit here. And this, these lines that I'm doing right now, I'm gonna let those ones dry completely. Those of you who got white, you might be saying, what, what am I gonna do with this? But look at these beautiful blends that you can create if you've got a white one. It also works really well with that effect that I was describing before, where you draw back in with a pencil. You can also, if you don't want, if you don't like graphite on your page, you can draw back in with um, any kind of a, wooden tool or um, like the plastic tine of a fork works also. You can get some really interesting effects by scraping away with a fork. So I encourage you to try that out. I think this needs one more color in here. Don't be afraid to use this kind of thick. Because <laughs> again, you're building up these interesting textures. For those of you who are new to Art Journal Snacks, one of the things that we have loved doing is sharing the side view of your journal as you fill it up. And the more interesting textures and things that you put onto your pages, the more uh, of an explosion of creativity it will look like in the end. So you can see now where the layers of the art crayon are, are kind of disappearing, that netting there. So it almost works like, a, like an oil paint stick. Put this a little closer if you can still see it, but 
what it's doing right there is really interesting where I scratched in with the pencil and then I went back over with the yellow but the slightly raised up portion where the pencil line is pushed it away so it didn't kind of go into those areas because it was more raised up so this is why layering is so fun um because things happen that you can't plan for so I have a tiny bit left of this wood so I'm going to use that on this page Mm -hmm. Last thing I'll do is just blend this inside part a little bit. So I'm going to leave that line how it is and use the water soluble capacity of the mixed media crayon here. You can see that you can get very bold marks as well as really subtle marks with this tool. So um, many of you have heard me say this before, how much I love tools, art tools that can do lots of different things, that can um, speak in many different voices, that right? they can uh, serve a lot of purposes in our art journal and practice. And the mixed media fans definitely do that. All right. So that needs to dry. I want this to dry. And uh, once I'm able to close the page, I'll just trim that page back the way it goes. So for right now, I'm going to stick a little wax paper in here. Uh, for those of you who are new, wax paper, just plain old wax paper from your grocery store is a great way to keep your pages from sticking together as you turn from page to page. And we'll play with one more material on this page. And that's one of the King Art coloring brush pens. So I did this scribble on here before with uh, water soluble graphite. And then I put this over the top. This is from uh, some kind of new packaging that's totally recyclable, recyclable packaging instead of plastic. So, things that I ordered. And, the, the bags all said, this is a test and this is an experiment. <laughs> so of course I had to save that. Because what a great message for art journaling, right? This is a test, I'm experimenting, I'm playing around with it. So I love the way that these pens work. They're a really nice, fine brush. And you can see the way that it's interacting with both the alcohol ink up here, as well as the water soluble graphite. Color is really beautiful. Um, recently, one of my students, one of my art therapy students, talked about this being just the right color. <laughs> um, being frustrated with some yellows in some crayon boxes that are not this more golden yellow color. So when you do a scribble of any kind, it's kind of fun to go back in and fill in parts of that scribble with color. Because it starts again, kind of confuse the eye a little bit. Which part was done first? Which layer here happened first? Pencil was on the page before adding. So this is a test text. Which means it's only going to blend in some areas. So I will probably do a few more things to this page. Just, I don't know, maybe there'll be 
some kind of imagery that's woven through the whole thing. But I wanted to show one more thing that I like to do to pages when they feel done-ish or I'm starting to feel like they might be done is to kind of close them in, to frame them a little bit. And this is just a stamp pad that I'm using and I'm rubbing it along the edge of the page. And this is a practice that for whatever reason over the past maybe two years or so has just become much more regular way that I've been treating my art journals. I'm not entirely sure why, but <laughs> I guess that's for the art therapist to figure out for herself, right? <laughs> But it just feels kind of more complete when I do that. And it's also very satisfying. I guess it also gives it a little bit of that vintagey look. So again, later I'll trim the rest of that tape away. And I'll probably add something else to this. I don't know what yet. I think I need a little wax paper there because you can see that some of that transferred over there. Okay. And close that one up. And I want to show you one more thing and then we'll do a little sharing. And then um, if we have more time, I'll show you some more things. Okay. So I wanted to play with, with collage. This is in an altered book that I'm working on. It's going to work. I was trying to turn it that way so it would orient right, but I think it'll fit better this way. So this is a dressmaking form with a, with a crown on it and wonderful pearls. And uh, I just love, I have one here in the studio. You can't see it, it's around the corner, but um, I love vintage items like this. I just think they're so beautiful. And it's that reminder of um, how much cool ephemera there is in the world that we can play with and look for. So I thought that the, brush pen, the midliner brush pen would look nice with this. Um, and if you didn't notice this right away, you might see, oh, it's double-ended, but maybe you didn't read that and you only saw the brush side. But sneak peek, there's kind of a bullet end, um, a super fine bullet end on the other side. So don't miss that. <laughs> um, so when I have a page like this with a very strong image, sometimes I like to just do a little bit of free writing first to think about um, how, how else am I going to work on this page. Okay, so I wrote, uh, things from the past have a deep resonance and a history that cannot be created quickly. And I think that's kind of a, a good rallying cry for looking around in your life and seeing what kind of interesting ephemera you have that you can incorporate into your art journal. So I'm gonna go back to the mixed media crayons for a little bit because there's this little bit of turquoise coming in on this image from where I cut it out. So add a little bit, of, a little bit more of that color. Plus, I think it looks really beautiful with the brown, kind of rich color here. And I'm thinking preview of things to come, but I'm thinking that this page might be a really fun page to incorporate some of the mica that we got in this box in the ephemera kit. So if you were looking at that and said, "What?" is this? What are these little circles? What is this disc? Um, it's mica. It's actual real mica. And there are lots of ways that you can incorporate it in on pages, which we'll play with in some of our other live streams, either on Mix or here in one of our bigger Zoom sessions. But I think this page might be just right for a little bit of that mica. I'm going to turn this a little bit now. 
and I'm going to go in and you can see it moves a little bit more when it's on a magazine page. So trying these mixed media crayons out and seeing how they behave differently depending on the paper. You can almost use your water brush or your paintbrush as an eraser on magazine paper. So if you scribbled somewhere that you wish you didn't, you covered up a word you wish you didn't on magazine paper, you can move it away with, with your water brush or with a paintbrush. I'm just using a water brush because uh, every time I've had water on the studio deck in one of these live streams, I've managed to somehow knock it over on myself. So I learned my lesson. Just wash my water brushes really nicely afterwards. Okay. So don't be afraid to obscure your words. You know they're there. And if they feel really important to have them be visible, you can pull them back up again. You can write them again in a different media. But again, it's about this like richness of layers that adding writing and imagery and color and different textures. One of the wonderful things about art journaling. So we'll let that one dry. And I want to take a little bit of time and see if people want to share before I share any other things. Great timing. I was just going to jump in. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to share something, feel free to raise your hand um, and I'll call on you. Or if you want to turn your camera on, I'm going to release the spotlight remove spotlight there you go so whoever wants to share um i will spotlight you so we can all see what you got going on or this could very much just be a working session <laughs> which would be absolutely fine um, there's not a huge learning curve for the uh, uh, Marabou art crayons, but um, they're definitely fun to play with. Okay, ooh, I see some hands. All right, I first saw Jill. Jill, I'm going to ask you to unmute, and I will spotlight you if you want to show. Turn your video on. All right. Awesome. Okay, what you got? Um, so I'm the one that live in that I'm currently living in the really dry climate. Um, and so it, it doesn't really blend after a few minutes very well. So I have to be really, really quick with the water with the crayons. Um, but I had a lot of fun scratching back in afterwards. That was a lot of fun. Um, let's see what else. Um, this was my um, tissue paper page. Still working on it a little bit. Um, wow. And I actually had some salt on my desk. So that's kind of fun <laughs> with the watercolor. Um, and then this page I just am working on right now. So, and then I've also done my front, which is kind of fun. And then my back. And I used, I'm using a lot of ephemera from that newspaper. That's I, when I saw that, I was really excited. <laughs> so. That's it. Thanks, guys. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm going to go over to Ellen next. Feel free to unmute. I'll spotlight your video. Here are the brushes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and it was um, it was a clothing catalog um, and linens. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that it was the brushes. I'm the I'm the person with the brushes. That's all. Erin, was it one other person with brushes? I think it was Alan. I think it was Alan. Okay. I didn't know if there's like six or seven others out there that might have the brushes, but. I'm sure other people have pulled it out too. Amazing. If we find others, we should make one post on Mix with everybody's brush images. Love that. I also see virtual hand for Chloe. 
Chloe, feel free to turn your video and sound on and I'll spotlight you. Hey, um, I'm Chloe. I'm just gonna turn my camera around really quick. Um, oh, hold on one second. Ah, here we go. All right, so I kind of kind of had a lot of time this week to work on stuff. And um, um, it's a little, get it there there you go. Is it doing it? Okay, kind of, hold on. Is your blur? I love the blurry feature for uh, <laughs> meetings, but um, there you right. go. It's not working today. Um, so now I had a lot of time this week to work on stuff. Mm -hmm. So not a lot totally finished, but I was having so much fun with the jelly, which uh, it's so unpredictable. And I was using, this is like the, the crayon um, to see what it would do. Um, just trying to incorporate like some nature stuff in right now. But I tried it on black. Um, I had to do some painting and then I did the crayon on black and I just love it, it's so fun. So that's just some of what I'm working on. This is beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. And great tip on doing it over black, that's fun. Awesome. Um, I'm just making a note here, Aaron's comment in the chat, if anyone wants to share but doesn't want to talk, you are welcome to share, this is what I did, and we'll just, I'll just spotlight you, and you don't have to say anything, we'll just take a look, that's a great option. Yeah, great hot tip on the crayon on black paper. I don't think I, well, actually, maybe I have tried it. It's not the first th thing that I think of, so very innovative. We have a little bit of time, Erin. Do you want to jump back in? Um, and then at the end, we can bring it back to a little show and tell again. Absolutely. Okay. So I wanted to show you all, and you can see the behind the scenes of this page happening over on my Instagram. Um, but <laughs> this was a page that I made yesterday. Um, while my students were working on a project in class, I was uh, sitting here uh, with Sammy on the desk, my parrot, and she was having way too much fun with the Marabou art crayon. She was kind of waving it around, and um, if I hadn't have taken it away from her, she probably would have cracked it open with her beak like an almond. Um, so I decided to do a, a painting of her with the art crayons as a base. So I used um, the white and uh, this one, and I used a little bit of an orange one as the base, and then I went over the top with uh, watercolor and a couple other uh, tools, like an acrylic paint pen. Um, and so that's how I created this image of Sammy. But I wanted to show this because I used the marabou crayon in a couple of different ways. So as a base, and then using it really wet to just get a little color on this, um, on this colored ground of the brown paper bag and then uh, using it a little more thickly over here and then blending it away a little bit as well. So again, there's, there's kind of all these different ways that you can use that tool and uh, different things that can happen with it. Some other things that you see on this page is uh, one of Sammy's feathers that she molted yesterday. So I incorporated that in and um, some sewing. So you can see here where the marabou art crayon comes up against the machine sewing stitch, it kind of clumps in there. Again, I just, I love the textures that we can put into our journals. All right. Um, another thing that I wanted to share was incorporating it against um, collage. So this is a beautiful collaged image that I put into this page. This paper here is the outside of a bird seed bag, like a wild bird seed bag that just had these really great patterns on it. So I incorporated that in. And then this is that marabou art crayon. Again, coming back against the, where the two collage edges meet to help them blend together. And once it's dry like this, so this is totally dry. It's been a couple of days since I did this. It almost looks like oil paint or um, like a, an oil paint stick that is completely cured. So it's just, it's a great tool that gives you that look without the scent and the toxicity of working with oils. 
um, which for some of us is a, a great thing. And then here's another example of using the art crayons in a couple of different ways, right? Using them just to create lines, blending it back, and then combining it with watercolor so you can see a little bit of the resist happening here between the watercolor and the art crayon. And it's subtle again, but it's it's just interesting the way they the way they play together here as well. White art crayon, blue watercolor over the top. All right. I think I had a couple other art journal pages I wanted to show you. Just in thinking about your journaling practice is incorporating writing in on a page um, in a way that just feels like I have something I want to say, I want to write it down, and then I'm going to incorporate it into a page um, just to kind of hold or contain the writing. So this is an example of doing that. Again, we've got a little bit of art crayon up there. And then here's another example of using the scratching back in. So this is a page about um, the crows that I feed uh, every morning and also some sadness in the words over here. This is a preview of things to come in the ephemeral world <laughs> over here. Um, and then a, a Trader Joe's sticker uh, with a, this little fish in a pie that just cracked me up. And this is kind of some textured paper here. Okay, so I think, yeah, this is almost dry enough. So the other thing that's really great about these dimensional 3D liners is they dry pretty fast. You can see I'm touching this and it's pretty darn dry. I wouldn't shut the page entirely at this point. So I'm gonna put a little bit of wax paper in here just where those two parts come together. Let me turn the page again. Okay, so on this page, I'm gonna pull out another little bit of ephemera in here. So we all got a couple pages from a book and Five gold stars, if you figure out what book it's from, to message me on Mix. So the reason you got a book page is not to read, but rather to look through and find words that have meaning to you. Okay, so don't read the book, but rather look for meaning in, in the words. Okay, so. It's definitely a meaningful one to me. So you see, I switched the way I'm holding it now. When you hold it like this, like a pencil, you have a little bit more control. It comes out a little more slowly and more fine. If you hold it like this, like you're holding a, a holding, making a fist with it, it's going to come out faster and kind of more at a time, a little clumpier. So I'm just gonna line out the text that I don't want. So I'm taking negative text, text and making it positive. Okay, so 
have gone through now and selected parts of the text that mean something to me, gotten rid of the other parts. Sometimes I'll go back in and edit again, but you saw I did that pretty quickly. I didn't think too much. I tried not to read it too closely, but rather just hold the parts that like, oh yeah, that part or, oh no, not that part, knowing that I can do more editing later. But um, it's a great way to kind of start a page that's maybe a little bit more intuitive. You have a little bit less control over, um, over where your mind goes with it, right? Because you've started with this page of text that is pre-existing. Right, it's not instead coming to your journal with a plan like today I'm going to journal about my hope. Um, this instead is about responding to text that's already on the page. Okay, so working with this page, then this part's pretty wet. Um, so I'm going to turn this upside down again so I can play on this page. I think I'm going to use the softest of the pencils we got, so the 4B. And just use some scribbling. I'm pretty sure I have something over on my desk that I can incorporate in on this page. Some good some good doodles. So if you go over the top of the 3D liner with the pencil, look at these interesting textures you can get. This might be making some of you go like, oh no, you're getting the pencil all dirty. But that's the great thing about working with the pencil is you can just sharpen it and it's good as new. And look at these really interesting marks that you can make when you get a little bit of that of that 3D liner onto the pencil. Again, this is why in your art journal, just experimenting with what you can do by combining the different materials together, throw any of the rules that you may have learned about how to use materials, throw them out the window. Okay? Only thing I ask of people is like, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> don't hurt yourself with the art materials, but otherwise anything goes. Try out new things. I'm gonna turn it back this way. You see how interesting that part is there? We've got all these great marks happening. I'm looking for, there it is. I found a pretty awesome thing that I wanted to collage into this page. So this is actually made with wire and then photographs, but it says doodle. And I just love this so much. I might need to get some wire and make this for myself as well. But I thought this would be a neat page to incorporate in on a page that already has some scribbling. And it's doing something that's so wonderful and that it's kind of already fitting right in here, right where I want it to go. And I didn't plan this, but I, I actually really love the color combination that's happening here. This like golden, greenish brown and red. I love the edge of that pencil in there and there. And then I'm going to go in with a little bit more right over the top here. Which one? Page feels really satisfying to me, very messy, but still a little bit of 
organization between the words and a pencil line. So it's that balance between things that I have control over and things that feel messy and how might they exist together in the same art journal page. So once this dries, I'll probably go back through this text one more time, see if there's any other text that I can eliminate. And uh, then I'll probably do a little bit with this color, bringing a little bit of this color into the other parts of the page, like maybe here on this edge. And actually, once the acrylic dries, the mid liner that I got, the brown one, might look really nice on this page. So I'll just set that out. I think that would be a good combination. I had one more page I wanted to show you related to that, which is here. This page kind of has a similar feel to it. So I've got some writing that I did. I've got some text from a book. I've got a little bit of collage but it's a very different look, right? So using those same tools, the same thing, but the elimination of text was done differently, the writing was done differently, and the collage is more, more text rather than visual. But again, same components com com that created into a page that has a very different look and feel. So there's so many different ways to use these techniques. And um, that's part of why we've designed the classes in this way, to show you the opportunities without telling you, you have to do it in these steps, right? We'll show you different ways to work with, with the materials, but not tell you, you have to do it this way. Because actually one of the really fun things is to be seeing all of the different ways that everybody's been creating with the materials that we share in each box, all right? So I would love to see if anyone else has questions or anything they'd like to share. We've got about 10 minutes left of class. If you don't want to verbally ask a question, feel free to put it in the chat as well. Erin, I can't wait until you dig into um, the newspaper club newspaper a little bit more. Do you have any ideas of what you think you might use it for? I mean, the options are endless in there. Let me show you. Let me show you one thing that I've done. But it is, it's, <laughs> there's so many good things in there. Uh, one of the things I did was cut out the little newspaper club person. <laughs> um, I kind of thought it looked like he was holding some, it could be an art journal, right? It could be something. I did this during class with some of my students um, while they were working on things. Um, so I've got some washi tape here, I've got some writing, um, some acrylic paint pens, some other collage text. Um, but I just thought like, yeah, this guy's doing a little art and thinking about making things that feel good with it. Um, other things that I think are kind of interesting to play with. And Sarah, I know you do this a lot, of just kind of taking the text and not worrying about what the words are, but rather just using the forms as like interesting texture, which is kind of what I was doing here with this magazine paper. But some of these big pieces of text, right? When you, when you crop in on it, you can kind of tell what letter it is, but it would make really interesting backgrounds and uh, textures inside of your art journal. And then, you know, things like this happen where you cut parts out and then you see this overlapping. Like that all by itself is an interesting composition that you could cut these then two pieces and add them in on your art journal and make something with that. So, so many opportunities. What if you took the crossword puzzle and didn't do the crossword puzzle, but rather did your own journaling inside of those spaces? That would be really fun. Um, we've already seen today how someone used that, how it works. The good news, this part, I think, is you can do a whole page about that, right? Just cut out that part and make a page that's about good news. Good news in your life. Good news that uh, you're excited about in the world. 
And then this is hard, right? This huge, beautiful poster. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, you can cut it up. Uh, like this part, our worth. You can make a full page about that. Yeah, that poster is is a lot to handle. <laughs> oh, I see a hand raised. Uh, Darla Jo, would you like to share? Yeah, um, just a, an observation on my end um, from my scrapbooking days. Um, I love to save um, greeting cards and um, even with uh, different um, places that I donate to, they'll occasionally send me a packet of greeting cards for different occasions. And um, I find that I'm using them more for, you know, my, my art journaling than I do uh, sending out to anybody. Um, you know, like cutting out the word beautiful and finding a good spot for it uh, in my journal. Um, but I'm just wondering, is, is this something that you find that you do as well? Are you always kind of like on the hunt like me, um, looking for things in your mail, um, going places, you know, walking into like a uh, rest stop and looking at all the pamphlets that might be offered for different things around the state that you can do, different events and whatnot. Um, I don't know if I'm just being obsessive or, or if I'm just not alone in this. And so I was wondering, you know, like, uh, you know, I have the pretty one here that I did with uh, incorporating uh, about prayer into a page that I was doing, but I thought that maybe I could use uh, this little piece of art that I made here, um, putting that beautiful thing up here or down here. Um, Again, that's just something that I like to, but um, can you tell me whether or not I'm alone in this? <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I think you can see a little bit of the chaos in the studio. It's a, it's a little extra right now because I'm transitioning between a couple offices. So there's more than just my stuff in here. Um, but yes, I'm looking all the time. In fact, I was cracking up this morning when I was driving home from um, where I paddle in the morning because there was there's this piece of graffiti that I that's brand new that I saw it and I was like oh I want to take a picture of that because it would be so cool in an art journal but it's right on a freeway on ramp and there's really I can't stop so I keep thinking like maybe I'll just like set my camera to video and hold it up in the window and like then cut it down or screen capture it later so maybe tomorrow but um, I'm always looking for things that might incorporate into an art journal. Um, I'm always doing strange stuff. Like it's sometimes it's a little embarrassing if people don't know me, but we're like at a restaurant and, you know, <laughs> in the, <laughs> the chopping of paper or like sliding the menu into my bag. And they're like, what are you yes. doing? Oh, come on. I mean, so here, yes. right. Like, this was from a sushi restaurant that I went to with a friend. Look how great that business card is. Look at that beautiful pattern, right? Yeah. So like, was I going to leave that there? No. And so of course, if I did that, and this is the other side of the card and it's got this great pattern and then here's the chopstick paper. Yeah. And so it makes a little, little bit and then I can make a journal page reflecting on having lunch. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and like, yeah, I got a mailer, uh, it, um, that sent to me with some free stuff in it from a Native American uh, group that I donate to. And just the pattern on here uh, was enough for me to get all giddy. And uh, more than the free gift that they sent me, it, it, it was more giddy about this than the, than, than the gift. But that, that was a know. gift. That looks like the they don't know you, but the assembly <laughs> is a gift. <laughs> um, everyone in the chat is also saying you are not alone. I collect materials too. Um, I think it's safe to say that if you are art journaling, you are always on the hunt for the ephemera pieces. Um, I absolutely can agree with everything that is being said here about that. Yeah. So, thank um, you for sharing. I see the question in the chat about how to print photos to use in art. So a couple things to know. Can you print 
pictures with an inkjet printer, yes. However, just be careful with what materials come up next to it. If you have a laser printer or access to that, that's going to be a lot, it's going to last a lot longer. Um, I have a couple little photo printers that I use that use zinc ink. That's pretty, pretty stable. Um, I also have a couple thermal printers. Um, that you can't use alcohol or anything solvent based next to, but um, I think I have an example here of a page with a thermal print. I've got one right here. So, oh yeah, from the other day, and then um, watercolor next to it. So, those are some of the things I do um, using photos, but. Um, I think that, you know, the, the upshot of it all is keep your eyes open all the time. Part of why we do the ephemera packs is to inspire you to look for what sorts of things you might find in your world. <laughs> little okay. oh, little yeah. photos. I've got a, a little machine that um, I can just, you know, right. take from my photo stock and pick out the photo that I want to print. And it's nice and small, just perfect for the, the book. Yeah, great. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kelly Jo. We appreciate it. Um, thank you. There's one other question that I saw that sort of got um, commented over. Would you ever consider showing us a tutorial on how you create some of your own homemade ephemera? Yep, I can definitely, I can do that on Mix. Um, that I think that would be a good spot to do it. Sometime I can show some of the things. The marbling might be a little tricky, but I can definitely I can do an article about it. It's a little harder to show. I could maybe pre-record something. Oh, yeah. I, I would just need like a, a higher vantage point. I think it's a little harder to do on the tabletop. Um, but yeah, I can show some of the other weird stuff I've been doing for sure. Because uh, I've I've been making big messes and having lots of fun making things for you all. Amazing. Awesome. All right. Well, we're at time right now for class. Uh, so if you have anything else you wanted to share, you know how to reach Erin on Arts Next Mix. Um, if anything you made today you want to post on Arts Next Mix, please feel free to do it there. We are all excited to see what you're making. Erin, um, thank you for your time today. And for everyone joining us live, thank you as well. This is a great kickoff to this box. Happy summer, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.